Let's now look at age analysis of debtors and creditors. So here is an interesting practical aspect that demands good reasoning and problem solving ability. So whether a debtor buys on credit, an agreement is made regarding the date of repayment. So this is known as the credit period and this is set out by the business to the debtor. So debtors usually try to postpone the payment as long as possible in spite of the credit conditions imposed. And remember they had to sign a contract to, to show that they know the credit period and the credit conditions that is imposed. So before accounts are sent to debtors, an age analysis is conducted for good control purposes on every debtor's account. So this is to determine which debtors have exceeded their credit period, which debtors are only taking a chance by paying too late, and which debtors will have to be written off as a bad debt, or which debtors need to be handed over to the attorneys for debt collection. So let's look at the following example of a debtor's age schedule. See if you can provide creative answers that will encourage debtors to pay their overdue accounts. Example number three. The accountant of Parky Stores conducted an age analysis of outstanding debtors on the 31st of May 2015. The following are summarized in the age schedule given below. Instructions. If the credit period granted by Parky Stores to all debtors is 30 days following the date of the first account statement, state what your recommendations would be in respect of actions to be taken against each of the given debtors. Now firstly, because our period is 30 days, there's already some red lights that you should notice. Everything lying from 60, 90 and more than 90 days is problematic. Also, something that's problematic in the age analysis is balances that are way over what they should be. So that becomes a problem or a concern for us. And then also amounts that has been long overdue is a problem. And also debtors that keeps on buying even though their accounts have been outstanding for 90 days, 60 days, 30 days. And we keep on selling to them. That tells us about the control of this business. So even from the first glance, these things should be noticed so that when the questions are asked later, that something starts to ring a bell as to what they are after in the answers. So let's consider the questions. First question, general comments in respect of the control of collections of debtors obligations. So firstly, we can say that only the debtors account is up to, only one debtors account is up to date and that is the account of F Natler. This is an indication that the collection of debt and the investigation of credit worthiness of debtors were not properly conducted. So in other words, there's only out of all of our data, out of the five debtors we've got, only one data is actually doing as he supposed to do. In other words, paying his account within 30 days. So there's already telling us that something is not right. The investigation of credit worthiness that is mentioned here is simply mentioned because we expect our creditors or our debtors that is credit worthy to abide by the terms that were set out. So if they aren't abiding by the terms that is set out, they are actually causing harm to their own credit worthiness and therefore maybe they already have done so with other 
institutions that is also providing credits for them. So if we looked into, investigated into their creditworthiness more thoroughly, we would have perhaps picked up that they actually don't pay their debt so um, diligently and therefore we were not supposed to allow them debt in the first place. Now let's consider each of our debtors individually and see what the problems are. So the first data is Jay van Veek. Now Jay van Veek, the biggest problem is that he still owes us 7,200 for 30 days. So he should have paid that off already a month ago. Then currently he bought an extra 12,500. So out of all of my debtors, he owes the most. 19,700 is owed by him to us. So his biggest concern is that he's indebted with 7200 regarding goods that was purchased already during April. And he should get a reminder sent to him with a request to pay immediately. Especially the 7200 that's already now been overdue for a month. So he needs to immediately pay his account off. Then data number two, as previously mentioned, is our model of a debtor. He is doing exactly as he should because he doesn't have anything owed to us older than the current. So he is paid everything as he should and he owes us still 6980 but we are not too worried about that because we can see that he's paying off his account as he as is requested. So if Natla his account is of no concern at this stage because um, he's either a prompt payer or it could also be that he's maybe one of our new debtors and therefore this is the first month that we're doing business with him. Um, hopefully he's a prompt payer and that we won't experience any problems with him further. Our third debtor is S. van Staden. Now S. van Staden is one of our big concerns. He is or she is owing us already from 90 days, 60 days, 30 days and currently. So at the moment, her account has already accumulated to 13,560, which is a huge amount. Now firstly, the first problem that you should see with this is that even though she's owing us already for four months, we still keep on selling to her every single month which is just showing towards poor internal control on our part. We should, of course, basics tell us that there should be a cut-off date. So if you don't pay me, you can't buy on credit anymore. Okay? So pay first and then we talk again about buying further because now where we were only could have only been concerned about her not paying us 3,760 Rand, we are now concerned that she won't at all pay us 13560 because we kept adding to her account. So for her, she is definitely an unwilling payer and she should receive a final warning to pay. So in spite of the fact that she's a slow payer, we are still selling to her or we're still offering her credit. And this should be considered... A she should actually be considered not to sell anything to her unless the account is of course settled. So once her account is settled, then it's fine, then you can sell to her again. But until then, she's not allowed to buy on credit anymore. Our fourth data then is Y de Vol. So Y de Vol is also an interesting case. Y de Vol has an account here of 3420 which is owed to us 90 days and longer. So she hasn't bought anything in the past three months, but this amount of her is still outstanding. So that can point either towards the data is missing. We don't know where to find the data. So she's not getting a reminders that she still owes us money. So maybe she's disappeared or something. And we need to now take very strong action as to getting this money in from the data. So she owes us 
3420 regarding purchases made in January or earlier. She didn't make any purchases during the last few months, which means she cannot be traced. Or she might just have a new address. Anyways, her account should be handed over to the lawyers for collections. Our last letter then is A. Swanepoel. He is in a similar situation as Y. De Waal. The only big difference is that Y. De Waal owes us 3,420, whereas A. Swanepoel only owes us 450. So he's already purchased goods in January or in February, which makes it that he hasn't bought any goods for the couple of three couple of months. So therefore, he's also maybe missing or or not coming forward to pay. So we should take action to send him his statements. In the case of A. Swanapool, though, he's indebted with 450 Rand only for goods that he purchased already in February. So we should definitely send him a final reminder. But the amount is probably not big enough to justify the cost of an attorney to recover what he owes us. So we will keep on sending him reminders. We will probably not give him over to the attorneys though. Just something to note. An age analysis in respect of our creditors or our payments to the creditors is also drawn up for internal control. So it's just internally that we draw it up for internal control purposes. And this helps us with our payments to our creditors. Um, it also helps us to just see which creditors needs to be paid first and which needs to be paid last because all of my creditors doesn't have the same terms. Some allows me 30 days, others allows me up to 120 days. So that when I do my analysis, I can just plot when I will pay who. In this, we'll also guarantee then prompt payments to our creditors and this prevents them from imposing interest on our account. Remember, interest is charged on our account when we pay late. And we don't want to do that because that costs the business extra. So even more importantly, it ensures that our business establishes a good name. Remember, we want to have a good name so that we can go to other creditors and also request them to allow us to buy on credit from them. And this is done when we have a good credibility or a good rating for our credit. And we get that from paying our other creditors on time as we should.